John Noe unveils Greater Than We Believe with your host, Stephen King. Hi, welcome back. We're glad to see you here. My name is Stephen King, and this is my friend John Noe. We are in doing a continuing Bible teaching series called Greater Than We Believe. Uh, this week, we are continuing our discussion that we started having to do the subheading under Greater Than We Believe. Mm -hmm. This subset is called Kingdom, the Kingdom Driven Church. And so we have been uh, using Pastor Sunday at Elijah. I said his name right. <laughs> Uh, some of his a uh, couple of his books and some of his teachings as uh, a basis for the, what we've been talking about uh, of a practical way mm. that we can be involved in the kingdom. This is the two books right here. One is the Church Shift, and the other one is the Kingdom Driven Life. And uh, those both books are, are wonderful read I would suggest if you don't have one to consider getting it but uh, what John has been doing is basically almost like a Cliff's Notes version he's been picking up on some really good highlights but there's so much that we just don't have time to cover so you might want to consider doing that so today's video is number 113 and uh, it's called the Orange Revolution John tell us about the Orange Revolution well I'm gonna read a story okay it's not my story Pastor Sunday had Elijah story. We, we read an, another story earlier yes. in, in an earlier video about his up, humble beginnings. Yes. And now we want to fast forward and read another story that is an amazing story that, that he, he titles The Orange Revolution. And he starts it out like this. He says, in March of 2004, his church marched on City Hall. Hmm. Isn't that something? Yes. Maybe some of our churches today need to hmm. march on City Hall. Now, this is City Hall in Ukraine? In Ukraine. Wow. Kiev, Ukraine. And gave his church, and because they marched mm -hmm. in mass, now this is several thousands of people getting out of the pews, yes. putting feet to their faith, literally, <laughs> marched on City Hall because of that, which he talks about in here. We haven't got, I haven't done, done that, but it's in here. I haven't shared that with, with uh, you know, in one of our videos. Uh, it gave our church, he says, it gave our church a major victory in the face of potential danger because before that time, our church was not permitted to own any land and they had gotten run out of all the buildings that they were meeting in. Hmm. And they were, you know, had nothing. Mm -hmm. he, he said, now, the but because they did that, the government uh, changed their policy and would allow Churches like him, uh, who are not uh, uh, Russian Orthodox, mm -hmm. uh, of the Russian Orthodox faith, which was the uh, faith of the country, yes. you know, whatever you call it, he said, he said uh, and allowed the government, gave, not only allowed, but they gave him, gave him for no money, hmm. no cost, gave him a large piece of property right in the middle of the city. Hmm. It didn't cost us a dime, he says. He says, standing up to the authorities became another step of our journey that would transform our nation. But in a breathtaking short time, God went further and used our example to start a political revolution that changed Ukraine's total government. Wow. So here's that amazing story. Mm. So sit back. Relax, and I'm going to share it with you. Okay. That was in March. Okay. In November of 2004, six months after our march, Ukraine held presidential elections. Unlike the United States and other Western countries, where elections are mostly transparent, fair, and democratic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Ukraine's elections were still a murky business. The candidate of the established Moscow-backed government represented the old, heavy-handed, and corrupt ways of doing things. Thank God we live in a country where that's not practice, huh? Uh, 
His opponent was Victor Yuvashenko, if I'm pronouncing that right. Am I pronouncing that right? I think. Uh, who represented democracy and a more open and servant hearted leadership. Hmm. The election was very close, and a runoff was held between the established candidate and challenger Yuvashenko. Uh, when the votes were counted, it became clear that Yuvanchesco, that Yuvanchesco had won. But the current government leaders were rigging the vote count to keep themselves in office. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. This did not surprise anyone. It was common for sitting governments to steal elections in our part of the world. But this time, the, po the political and social economic atmosphere of Ukraine was as explosive as a tinderbox. People had tired of corruption and chaos in their leaders. Bureaucracy and a deficient executive had led many people to, uh, to absolute poverty. Social problems had worsened to the point of crisis. Street children, drug addiction, alcoholism, crime, prostitution, AIDS were ravaging the country not, and not being addressed. Uh, the Ukrainian people, many, for the Ukrainian people, many were living on the edge of poverty, and corrupt systems gave ordinary citizens, uh, citizens no legal recourse. Minimum wages were barely enough to keep people from starving, and there were l ludicrously low pensions uh, that humiliated elderly people, and young people saw no future for themselves. This contrasted with the millions of dollars of so-called new Ukrainians who considered themselves the elite in society, but who were taking the wealth of the country for themselves through corruption and unjust laws. Again, sound familiar? Mm -hmm. So when the government tried to rig the election, people quickly realized that they were being ripped off. But this time they took action. For decades, our country had been frozen solid, paralyzed, and afraid. The Russian-backed communist mindset still ruled there. But our church's march on City Hall the previous March, uh, month of March, uh, was widely reported and criticized in the major media and had a strong but had a strong positive effect as well people saw that if you wanted to change things you must stand up for your rights mm. uh, you must demonstrate the justice of your cause the country has has seen us call for righteousness and openness in our leaders and instead of being greeted by bullets and tanks the leaders gave us what we asked for back in March Fast forward now to, we're now in, in November. Mm -hmm. uh, our actions helped to clear the fear from people's minds. Boldness be came to everyday Ukrainians and they began to dream of freedom. And they developed a willingness to fight for their rights. And they saw that the government is to serve people, not to hold them captive like cattle. Mm -hmm. As the newspapers and tell so what happened? So as the newspapers and televisions report, uh, television reported uh, that the established candidate had won the national had, had won the nation and, and and shook off its paralysis. So people, uh, excuse me, let me get this right. That the established candidate, the government guy, mm -hmm. had won rather than the one that had won most of the votes. And shook, the people uh, spontaneously took to the streets. Mm put feet to their faith. Again, in, in hundreds of thousands, and gathered in Independence Square, the main city square in Kiev. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of citizens left their jobs and homes to stand up for what was right. Soon half a million people crowded into Independence Square, and we adopted orange as our symbol of protest. It was a symbol of spring. New beginnings and new brightness in the heart of Ukraine. Even though we were met with soldiers with guns, we were convinced of the justice of our cause. Mm. Foretold by God, he calls this. He says, a church, as a church, we had been expecting some sort of major social change for more than a year. He says, I had prophesied several times that God was about to do something great in Ukraine in March of 2003, the year prior. Uh, and in 2004, he said, in one, he said, during the revolution itself, 
uh, oh, excuse me, he adds this. He says, during the revolution itself, 4,000 of our members prayed and fasted for, uh, for the potential violent standoff to be resolved. And in March of 2004, another prophecy that he prophesied, he said, prophesied this. He said, God will visit Ukraine and it will be an appearance of his glory and grace. It will be the sovereign act of God. It will depend on a person. Or it will not depend on a person or a particular church. God himself will visit this country. He will raise up Ukraine. Man, we should pray that for us. Really? That God would visit our country mm -hmm. today and and uh, and uh, in our presidential election situation. And he also probably said, Ukraine will be filled with the evangelical movement. The movement of transformation will bring many to, depend, to repentance. You will, be, you will be the history makers because God is opening heaven over Ukraine. Lord, open heaven over America. Yes. God will do incredible things through these people and these and things that, that we've never dreamed of. Lord, we need you to do that for America. Uh, God will raise up a Moses. He will raise up people who will be able to resist the present pharaohs by the power of the living God. Nobody will be able to oppose God's chosen people because no people can stop or overthrow God's power in this country. He says, this prophecy prepared my heart and the heart of many others in his, con in his church uh, for what was to come. And when it did come, we welcomed it. Mm. And threw ourselves out of the church <laughs> onto the streets. Yes. I added that. Then threw ourselves into support of our country. Here's what transpired. Revolution. In one word. Mm -hmm. it says, in that glorious winter. Now, winter in, U in, in, in the Ukraine is... Yes. Bitter. Not outdoor weather. No. He said, in that glorious winter of 2004, hundreds of thousands of us gathered in Independence Square to protest the unfair results of the presidential uh, election. It was the most wonderful revolution any country had ever seen. <laughs> Not a drop of blood would be shed. There was no angry mobs fomenting revenge. There, there, was, there were no would-be Lenins or Mavericks shouting through megaphones. Rather, the people were singing, dancing, laughing, and handing out flowers to the police guards. <laughs> Huge crowds in the square chanted, Yuvinchenko, Yuvinchenko, and we are for a fair vote. We are for a fair vote. They openly disputed the falsification of the vote count accused the officials of breaking election laws and demanded that the government resign and nullify the results of the Central Election Committee. Mm -hmm. Hello? <laughs> pride. Our patriotism and pride in our nation swelled in every heart. People dyed their hair, uh, their beards, orange. Mm. It used to be orange. I still got a little orange up here. <laughs> <laughs> to show their support of our orange revolution. The government was so amazed by what was happening that they accused our church of hypnotizing hmm. the country and making everyone unreasonably happy. And they thought we were using black magic. <laughs> <laughs> they thought we had orchestrated a massive protest, but it was the holy spirit yes. who had done it and we were just trying to keep up with his work yeah people from our church took an active role in sustaining the revolution in many ways they donated food warm clothing and tents to house the thousands of demonstrators camped in kiev's freezing independence square and our church erected a tent chapel in independence square and offered shelter to thousands of people who were protesting he says above all but above all, the people needed spiritual food during that relevant, uh, turbulent time. And the embassy, embassy of God had published a newsletter outlining God's principles uh, for the national transformation of Ukraine according to kingdom principles. And during the revolution, more than half a million copies were handed out to Ukrainians, fueling their hunger for spiritual awakening that went beyond political revolution. Hmm. Then, for the first time in history of Ukraine, representatives of different 
Christian denominations, the Orthodox, the Catholic, and the Protestants, gathered in the square to pray every morning for the settlement of the situations in Ukraine and for the triumph of justice in the land. The events of those days brought a spiritual unity to the country never seen in history. Hmm. What do you think about that? It's earth shattering. <laughs> in spite of the alarming news emanating from the government headquarters, the people in the square were constantly uh, uh, with were filled with constantly with inexplainable joy, he says. The nation could not be overcome by evil anymore, for God had come to the land. Brothers and sisters, do we need this hmm. for our land? It was in his hands that restrained the army and the military forces and kept the protests peaceful. Yes. At one point, young girls brought flowers to the thousands of soldiers. Hmm. Uh, and special police divisions who formed shields or walls of, against the protest. And these men were prepared to fire on command. But these girls approached them without fear. And they glowed with God's love and human dignity as they gave the flowers to the soldiers and the police force. Hmm. He said it was breathtaking. God himself was moving on the hearts of the Ukrainian people. It was not just an orange revolution, it was a spiritual revolution. We were not just standing against un an unfair vote, but against evil and wickedness in positions of power in all the spheres of society. Brothers and sisters, that's exactly what we're facing today. Yes. As we, as we video this, and of course this won't be released for another several months, mm. so we don't know what that's going to be like then. but. That's what we're facing today in this country, be assured of that. In the square, we waited for the government to respond to our demands, and we chanted, God is with us, and nothing can overcome us. After two weeks, the revolution achieved its victory. Hmm. The events in Independence Square finished peacefully. The results of the rigged vote were nullified. Hmm. Oh, praise God. Really? And the challenger, Yuvenshensko, was declared the victor. The world rejoiced with us by television. In our joyous celebration, the police and the military force never fired a shot. Now they smiled and received hot tea from the girls who had previously brought them flowers. It reminded me of the verse in Proverbs that says, When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace hmm. with him. Proverbs 16, 7. On that day, I told the people of our church. He said, Our church is not separate from the nation. The church is with the nation. We are not standing aside and remaining aloof. Thousands of members are here today and many thousands of believers from other churches. This is the triumph not only of the revolution of freedom and rights of man. It is the triumph of the kingdom. Yes. And we need that here. Yes. We need that here. Is that not possible? New beginnings. And I'll close with... He'll close up with this. He says, after the revolution, Ukraine, Ukraine started a new era. The change in the mindset of the people completely changed the political atmosphere in the country. In January of 2005, President Yushchenko amazed the nation by starting his first day in office with public prayer. Wow. He and his wife and children bowed their knees before an altar. Gathered with them were representatives of all the Christian denominations, including Protestant churches that were once considered cults hmm. in the Ukraine society. Now they stood together, blessing the president on his first day in office. It says, after his uh, victory, Yuvashenko thanked us, us being Pastor Sunday's church yes. and congregation, with a plaque of appreciation that said, quote, your conscientious work has become a considerable part in that victory. It was you who protected democracy in Ukraine, standing up for high ideals, not considering your own interests. Mm. You got something? A member of parliament told the media in 2004 uh, in a press conference 
Quote, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing good can happen in Ukraine if, strong Christian, if, if a strong Christian movement doesn't come and establish its principles in society. Without Christian principles, we can't manage to build something good. On Yuvashenko's inauguration day, was a, del- was a day of celebration for all of us, uh, Pastor Sunday writes. In his speech, he told the nation, quote, Today Ukraine is free and independent, and we have shrugged off a, the heavy load of the past. No longer will someone tell us how we should live and for whom we should vote. And we all shouted a, heartily, a hearty amen. He says, during the first months in office, Christians were delighted with uh, Yuvinchesko's unprecedented stand against corruption. He appointed many sincere Christian believers as ministers. Uh, in his cabinet or, you know, in the government. But the old government leaders were not ready to give up Mm -hmm. easily. They argued before the Supreme Court, (laughs) they have one too, in January of 2005 to try to have Yuvinchesko removed and their Moscow-supported candidate declared president. And they singled out our church as blame Mm -hmm. for making all this happen. But the hearing ended with their defeat. The Supreme Court upheld Ryshemko's victory, and the last gasps of the Soviet-style power grab were snuffed out. Oh, that's wonderful. He says, today, uh, Ukraine is a country blessed by God, and the people of Ukraine see a great future. But even better than a change of government are the change of hearts of the people. The Ukrainian people have tasted the fruits of freedom and will not allow anyone to deprive us, and we will not allow anyone to deprive us of it anymore. Spiritual revival has stirred in all spheres of the country among everyone, from the ordinary citizens to the highest government leaders. Today, Ukraine is 75% Orthodox Christian. And oh. Kiev is proud to be the mother mother church. Uh, or Ukraine is 75% Orthodox Christian, and it is the mother church of the uh, Orthodox uh, Russian Orthodox Church. Yet is yet there is a growing influence of Protestant churches that can no longer be denied. It says today the spiritual climate of Ukraine is being revived and the cathedrals are being restored, and God is bringing Ukraine back to its former glory. He says, ours is a land chosen by God for this moment in history. He says, there are still many battles to fight. Recently, the BBC visited and ran a news story about our church that aired around the world, and it was a positive report. But a Russian Orthodox priest was quoted on camera as saying about us, the followers become like zombies. Hmm. They are fully devoted to their leader of their organization, and they are ready to fulfill any of his desires. To which Pastor Sunday adds, he's exactly right that our people are fully devoted to their leader, but the leader is not me. Hmm. It's Jesus. Hmm. (laughs) And that's the end of that story. Wow. What is happening? He he concludes, what is happening in Ukraine is God-inspired, But it need not be unique. God has ordained similar revolutions for each nation and each individual. And the Lord wants every person to find a promised land and learn to rule it by kingdom principles. Lord knows we need that today here in our country. The world is waiting desperately for us to do so. So what about us Americans? What about you and I? Are we willing to go Hmm. and do and be? Or will we sit in our prayer closets Hmm. and in our pews and watch it all go away? Hmm. Well, the choice is ours, brothers and sisters. Yes. And that's the story, or at least highlights of it, Mm -hmm. of the Orange Revolution that was spearheaded by the Embassy of God Church, Pastor Sundays. In Kiev? In Kiev, Ukraine. 
which has a reputation for some pretty shoddy and underhanded government mm -hmm. and um, that's that's interesting what God's people can accomplish when they come together and put feet to their faith yep maybe we'll see something like that here wouldn't that be nice yeah it would be wouldn't that be a change <clears throat> it would be a welcome change <clears throat> well for some yeah, well, there's always, remember, there was still the, hey, they went so far as to take them to the Supreme Court to try to get get this thing overturned, but the Supreme Court, I'm guessing there was some godly men on there that... <laughs> well, or they could tell which way the wind would yeah, blow true. which that's had true. changed. Yes, it's true. Well, thank you, John, for that. Um, I always enjoy when we have when John shares a testimony with us uh, of any kind and uh, it just reassures my faith that uh, once again God is in control mm. and when circumstances sometimes look the darkest or the bleakest is sometimes mm. when he, he's about ready to form a miracle of some sort mm. but where it really warms my heart and and gives me a boost I need is when I see God's spirit moving among his people so those mm. his people do mm accomplish his will uh, God can, can wave his hand and make anything happen but uh, when God inspires his people and moves them through the spirit to accomplish things like this it really it, it gives me uh, pause for thought and encourages me I'm hoping it does for you too so John next week we're going to finish it up finish it up it'll be video number 114 under the same heading of kingdom driven church mm -hmm. and the name of that title will be called waiting for you so uh, we look forward to that one john and i'm hoping you'll come back to help us finish up this particular sub series and then where we're going from there i have no idea john will probably let us know something but um, anyway we hope to see you again next week god bless you come back and see us bye